Uh, yo, what is going on? It's your boy, Comfy Neat. Um, what's good, YouTube? Um, today, I just wanted to make this pretty candid video because last night, um, I kind of went through something. I may or may not have um, imbibed something. I'm not going to say what that is. But it made me come to um, a few realizations about life and about people and about I guess mostly myself. This video is going to be mostly me speaking for myself and it kind of made me realize the problem, one of my biggest problems may be that I care way too much. And you might be wondering, um, what do you mean by that? You're a lazy neat who um, wastes away in his mom's basement which is technically true, and um, doesn't really do anything productive with his life, doesn't contribute to society, doesn't um, do, you know, do his fair share of alleviating other people's burdens and, you know, being part of the system. And what I would say to that is that you don't know anything about me and that that might be true of some needs, understandably so, but I feel like there's actually two pathways to becoming neat and it depends on what end and depends on whether you're either at the middle of the spectrum, which I'm about to talk about, or are on the far side of either end. And um, I would say on one end of the spectrum, you have people who, um, for whatever reason, through their experiences, their brain chemistry, um, you know, maybe certain things that they've taken into their system that they eventually start to feel like nothing is real, like um, everything almost seems plastic, seems hollow, seems fake. Um, this is what people would call depersonalization, you know, and derealization, just feeling as if the world around you is a hologram. And, you know, it's like coming not just to an explicit understanding, because it's one thing to understand the fact that you have sensory organs that you perceive the world through, that sort of act as a proxy by which you perceive the actual physical reality around you and um, interprets it, I guess, through like a filter that is your mind. And it's another thing to actually feel this on an implicit level. And that's when you start to feel things like, everything is like hollow, is fake, is like a hologram, is something that is like a veil that prevents you from seeing actual reality, or maybe that this fakeness, this sort of static, like, I don't know, holographic reality is all there really is, and there's nothing of meaning beyond that other than emptiness. And I guess some needs feel this way, and I feel like long term when nothing is real and you feel like not just that it's real but you can't actually enjoy it because I feel like in some sense to enjoy the things of this world you have to kind of suspend disbelief the same way a gamer or, or, or a movie watcher suspends disbelief when they're playing a game or, list or watching a movie and when you can't ignore this sort of fundamental aspect of reality and you see the world as the sort of you know perceptual hologram that it is if that makes any sense then you start to um you start to feel because you that basically prevents you from forming an attachment to it and it basically makes it um difficult to have any skin in the game, so to speak. And when you don't have any skin in the game, things become meaningless. You feel alienated and disconnected to people who you don't even feel are real. And I'm saying, I'm talking like this because I feel like I experienced this for the first time. Um, you know, truly experienced this for the first time last night. I might've understood it on a conceptual level, but I didn't really actually feel this way until last night and even to some extent a little bit now and um it just made me realize that long term yeah this could be incredibly damaging and i definitely 
don't you do not blame people for feeling as if you know life doesn't matter and that there's no meaning inherent meaning to life because i guess fundamentally there really isn't apart from that which we choose for ourselves if we choose to that's really up to the person like i understand that some people can find peace and acceptance and nihilism so but um i'm rambling um yeah i can feel how long term for a lot of people that can lead to a uh, deep feelings of alienation and eventually you you know depression because nothing feels real and you don't have you know you don't have like a cause or a mission you can't and you can't i guess people like this long term can't really trick their minds they can't really get themselves out of that state of mind and um you know plug themselves back into the matrix in a sense it is like the ultimate red pill but it's a red pill that unfortunately some people have to take i feel like if i feel like this is one of those red pills where you know i want to be blue pilled instead and um yeah and um on the other hand but yeah i can feel at least like deep sense of like depression alienation and eventually feelings of suicide because why not just check out into oblivion which might be just blissful ignorance peace being one with the cosmos um being just your consciousness if you believe in all that meditation new age hippie wishy-washy stuff which i kind of partially believe in because of my other um ex- experiences and um yeah i can definitely understand that and also that disconnection from people can also lead to things like psychopathy um just a lot of self-destructive indulgent behaviors just so you can actually feel something other than the numbness that is just constant and and there and i'm talking as if like i've experienced this i have and i've experienced i I've, i've experienced this for a day and while i will say that it is eye opening i would not want to feel like this for the rest of my life like please plug me back into the matrix i just want to be a blue pilled you know blue pilled normy societal simp for the rest of my life i don't i don't want to feel this i don't want to feel this way forever <laughs> like seriously i don't i really don't and on the other hand you have me and the other type of me who is just overly blue pill or i guess blue pill let's just say blue pill so when you're blue pill in this sense it's like you have way too much skin in the game you believe you it's like you feel that connection to other people for no other reason than the arbitrary fact that your ba- your brain chemistry is just wired a certain way and you got to experience certain things that other people didn't even though I was bullied I wasn't bullied to the point of eventually leading to like dissociation and things like that and I definitely you know yeah have been lucky to some extent in my life but at the same time it's like it's like you're I'm I'm like that that teenager who just cares way too much for things i still feel to some extent that zest for life that wanting to be with other people wanting to be part of the matrix part of part of the uh i guess sidel machine although i like to sort of live on my own terms that's as like red pilled as i get i'm like for the most part i want to be i've wanted to i've been, i've always craved like that human interaction i've always wanted those close connections with other people i've never resonated with the statement that people are overrated or whatever like i feel like when i have thought like that it was really more of a defense mechanism and me trying to rationalize the fact that i wasn't getting the things i wanted out of life i wasn't getting the experiences with other people as well as the sensual and not sensual sensory experiences and all these other things because i i love 
I love life to, to like not you know like my life, but I love these things about life. I love eating good food, even just mediocre food. I love eating. I love um, I love listening to music. I love playing video games. At least when I'm not like dopamine, you know, flooded and my brain is desensitized to it. And I like all these things, and I like people, but it's to the point where, paradoxically, my love of these things causes me to act in ways which prevent me from getting them, and which leads to the other pathway of being neat, which is that you um, essentially are so afraid, you have so much skin in the game that you basically have in your own mind, which is just a stupid story people like me or us, whatever, tell ourselves is that we have too much to lose and if we get rejected by this person you know it's we're gonna miss out on so much even though there's like so many other interesting people out there and it's like funny how i understand this on an intellectual level but implicitly my body just acts on its own i'm still you know i'm still just afraid of rejection and because i have too much skin in the game i i want it so bad that I end up pushing it away from me because it's like, I think, oh, I'm not deserving of this thing that I, in theory, should be able to get as a relatively normal person. I am a little bit on the spectrum, but not enough where I can't lark my way through it. And I feel like, yeah, it's like I'm sabotage. It's almost like I'm sabotaging myself because I like it too much. I, and it's like, it's even like, not just with interpersonal relationships, but it's the same with like music, my music and just procrastinating in general. I'm afraid, I'm, I'm fearful because I have too much skin in the game. And because of that, I want to, um, it's like, by, because of that, I'm so afraid of not getting what I want that being rejected or failing failure hurts me too much because I've given I've given myself too much to lose and therefore when I ask and then eventually when I do lose which is inevitable because we're bound to fail most people are bound to fail at some point there's going to be that 0.01 percent who are just you know born savants who are perfect out of the womb but for most of us we have to fail to at least, you know, improve along the way as fucking generic as it sounds, but you know, all this generic stuff is honestly kind of true. And um, it's like, yeah, you have to fail. And because of that, I feel like I've avoided failure and therefore that has led to things like agoraphobia, avoiding social interaction, avoiding being outside because I don't want to experience that rejection and learn instead of learning from it. I just hide myself in my basement all day because I have too much skin in the game and I have too much to lose. And that in itself is detrimental and is the reason why I meet, which is contrary to the other side where nothing feels real and you have no attachment, no desire, nothing. It's like two equally crappy, but almost like on different ends of the spectrum situations. and having the feelings that I'm having now, it's like I was almost pushed towards the middle away from being too blue pilled to where I'm like purple pilled as far as I feel reality goes. And I kind of feel like I, like the purple pill or whatever, as far as this stuff goes, not talking about the gender wars, by the way, like I feel like it's really the happy medium where you care just enough where things are still pleasurable and you can fulfill your basic biological needs and feel that basic sense of connection with people and all that, but not care so much that you end up sabotaging yourself and acting in ways that are equally self-destructive as the other side. And it's like right now, I feel good in a sense, almost, I don't want to feel this way forever because I feel like already I am kind of maybe tilt it a little far farther past than I'd like. I'm feeling a little bit of that, just not caring about what people think, but it's too far to the point where I'm losing a little bit of the empathy that I normally have. 
I think you can be too empathic and not empathic enough. I'm think taking taken too far, I could end up leading towards not caring and you know laying down and rot. And in some sense, that might be the better option if you really have no more opportunity in life. I could understand that finding peace and nihilism, but for me, at least in my position, I don't think it's too late for me yet. And um, obviously, a lot of this is my own opinion, and I'm speaking for myself. And I kind of just verbal diary this video because I like I usually do, but even more so than normal because I don't know. I just kind of felt like it. I have even no idea what I was gonna say. What the point of me saying what the last minute was? But um, yeah, being purple pilled, I feel like being in that middle of that spectrum is definitely the way to go for me. And I feel like I'm almost there. So it kind of, in a way, feels good. And it's this experience, I guess, which kind of made me realize that kind of gave me that other, that other perspective, what it's like on the other side. And I definitely gave me a lot more, I guess, sympathy or empathy for the people who... I know this probably sounds like lip service, you know, maybe it is because I'm not really actually helping anybody, but um, I don't know. I'm just talking, I guess. Like, yeah, I think it made me realize that side of things and kind of made me realize my own faults, which is that I care too much, but it kind of made me feel what it's like not to care. And I have felt this way before but I feel like this is more in line with what it would be like to not care and be sober, you know, as compared to like not caring when you're on like alcohol or like Molly, I guess. But I think that's all I have to say for now. If I keep going, I'm probably gonna be rambling and saying unnecessary stuff. So um, this is Comfy Neat signing out. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And yeah, peace.